In electromagnetics, we are going to learn about the electrostatics, study of electric fields. Magnetostatics, study of magnetic fields. Electromagnetism, combination of both. The generation of EM waves, the transmission of the EM waves, radiation of EM waves and many things related to this. Overall, in electromagnetics, we will be playing with electromagnetic fields and waves throughout the syllabus. So, the very first prerequisite for studying the electromagnetics is to understand these vectors properly, is to position these vectors properly with respect to certain reference. For example, if you are sending an EM wave from one point on the earth to the other, then you must know what are the location of these transmitting and receiving points with respect to certain reference. You must know what is the direction of propagation with respect to that reference. In short, for studying electromagnetics, we must know how to represent any point, how to represent any vector in the space with respect to certain reference. And my dear, this reference is called as coordinate system. There are almost eight type of coordinate systems. But in electromagnetics, we generally use three that are Cartesian, cylindrical and spherical. So let us see about the Cartesian coordinate system. In Cartesian coordinate system, any point is represented using three distances or three coordinates that are x, y and z. x is the perpendicular distance from the yz plane. y is the perpendicular distance from xz plane. And z is the perpendicular distance from xy plane. Now, my dear, what are these planes? from which the distances are measured. You know, actually, we have three mutually perpendicular reference axes that are x, y and z as you can see from the figure. The common intersection of all these axes is called as origin. Now, you can clearly observe from the figure, the plane containing the x and y axis is the xy plane. The plane containing y and z axis is the yz plane and similarly the plane containing x and z axis is the xz plane. So these are our three reference planes which are used to define the x, y and z coordinates. Now what is x coordinate? It is the perpendicular distance from yz plane. Am I right? So if point P is like this, so its x coordinate or x distance can be represented like this, the perpendicular distance from yz plane. Similarly, what is y coordinate? It is the perpendicular distance from the xz plane as like this. My dear, it is very easy to remember. x coordinate, skip the s, perpendicular distance from yz plane. y coordinate, skip y perpendicular distance from xz plane. Similarly, z coordinate, skip z, perpendicular distance from the xy plane. So, it is very easy to remember. So, x is the perpendicular distance from yz plane, y is the perpendicular distance from xz plane and z is the perpendicular distance from xy plane as you can see from the representation. Now we have got what are the x, y and z coordinates. Now let us look about their ranges. What are the maximum values these x, y and z coordinates can take? So once again recall what the x coordinate is. It is the perpendicular distance from the y, z plane. Am I right? So my dear, a point is present on the y, z plane. Then according to the definition, its perpendicular distance will be zero is x coordinate will be 0. Now, let us assume that the point P is at a distance of 2 units from the yz plane and let us also assume that this point P is in the front side of the yz plane. So, its x coordinate will be plus 2 or 2. Now, if this point P is at a distance of again unit 2 but 
in the back side of the yz plane. So its x coordinate will be minus 2. My dear, according to our representation, these front side distances are positive x and these back side distances are negative x. So what I am trying to convince you, the given point P can be anywhere in the space. It can be at a distance of 1, 2, 3, 4, 4.5, 9, 10, 100, 200, whatever. The given point can be at any distance from the yz plane. It is up to infinity in the front side. Similarly up to infinity in the back side. So the x coordinate can be anywhere in between minus infinity to the plus infinity. So this is the range of the x coordinate. x coordinate can have value any value in between minus infinity to plus infinity. And working on the similar lines, we can easily say that the range for y coordinate is also minus infinity to plus infinity and range for z coordinate is also the same minus infinity to plus infinity because you know given point can be anywhere in the space. So to cover complete space, to cover complete range, x, y and z coordinates can vary between minus infinity to plus infinity. Now for our discussion, I have drawn the coordinate axis as like this front side plus x, back side minus x, left side plus y, right side minus y, upwards plus z, downwards minus z. Because you know, this is the standard way to represent the coordinate axis. But my dear, is this the only way? Should I draw the same diagram every time? The answer is no. My dear, you can draw these coordinate axis according to your need, according to the need of the problem that you are solving. But very, very, very important. When you draw these mutually perpendicular x, y and z axis, you must follow the right hand rule. For example, if I have taken the plus x axis like this and plus y like this, then I cannot take the z axis. I cannot take the plus z randomly. I have to find it using the right hand rule. My dear, it is very, very, very simple. Just curl your fingers from plus x to plus y. Again, I am repeating. Just curl your fingers of the right hand from plus x to plus y. Then thumb. This thumb will denote the direction of plus z. Isn't it very simple? For example, in our diagram, plus x is like this and plus y is upwards. So, if I curl the fingers from plus x to plus y, this thumb, thumb is coming outwards. It is coming out of the screen. So, the plus z axis will be like this. My dear, after that, you can extend this axis to get the negative direction as like this. Consider one more problem. Let us say plus x and plus y are like this. So, again, apply the right hand rule. Curl your fingers from plus x to plus y. Now in this case, the thumb is going inside the screen. So the positive z direction will be like this. And x, y, z you can draw like this. So you know, you can draw x, y and z coordinate axis according to your need. But you have to follow the right hand rule while drawing this mutually perpendicular axis.